Today, we're going to look at this inside the Banditos Motorcycle Club that's going around on the internet that these mainstream media is putting out. We're going to try to let you see both sides of the story here, so let's go. So they put the Banditos Motorcycle Club in the same tier as street gangs like the Crips and the Bloods. Funny thing is, I never see no Banditos going on a daily drive-by shooting like some of the gangs that they put him in with or gangs like out of Chicago with the Gangster Disciples and you name it. But that's the propaganda that you get from law enforcement and they pass that on to the media, which in return then poisons their audience's minds. It is unbelievable the length that cops will go to try to get a motorcycle club. And we know MCs, they must be some of the most unorganized crime, if that's even something you want to say. Because if they're organized crime, why the hell are they wearing logos that can freaking identify them on the back of their freaking jackets? And why does so many members have problems paying dues? If they were what the law enforcement said, they wouldn't have that many problems paying dues, now would they? But again, that's the propaganda that is pushed by law enforcement against motorcycle clubs and the DOJ man what are they they a doozy ain't they the DOJ J just come up with all kinds of stuff they're good at grouping just a few individuals and making the whole organization look bad uh here is uh Portillo when he was uh with the banditos running it and he has an awesome response to all this John Portillo is one of the club's top national leaders. He admits some in the group have criminal records, including his own conviction for drug possession. But Portillo insists the Banditos are not some huge organized criminal enterprise. That is not done as a club. If a brother is, is caught uh, uh, dealing dope or, or anything illegal, that's individual achievement. That's, that's, he's on his own. We don't condone that. These self-described outlaws wear patches which say things like, expect no mercy but they're not what you expect when you meet them. When we were started back in the mid-60s, it was there after the Vietnam War. Most of the guys had that do whatever you feel attitude. Uh, if it feels good, do it. Uh, whatever, it didn't matter. Illegal, legal, what have you. Nowadays, it's a little bit different. It's 21st century. We know we, know we can't live like that anymore. Most of us are all businessmen or have jobs. Their wives and girlfriends consider themselves property and call themselves proud bandito old ladies. The banditos talk a lot about their love for Harley Davidson motorcycles and for each other. My brothers invite me over for dinner. If it gets late, they offer me a bed to sleep in. My car is broke down. I can call any one of them up and they uh, come down and uh, help me out. Uh, it's unlimited what they'll do for me. I mean, it's like closer than family. In, in fact, I'm closer to my bandito brothers than I am to my immediate family. The banditos claim they're just misunderstood. There's a perception out there for most of us, and uh, it's not always correct. And uh, I think if you talk to one of us one-on-one, -on -one, man to man, you'll find out that we're really just uh, just uh, another. As you just heard, it is not the entire club that does the things law enforcement are claiming the banditos are doing. Now in Texas, they have a hard on for the banditos. This has been forever and it just got worse after Waco, Texas. But as you heard them say, it's only the individuals that do this type of stuff. So how can you blame the whole club if it's just an individual? It's especially true if you look at it a different way. Let's bring you law enforcement up. 
Should we all hold you accountable for the actions of just a few of your people? You'd go up in arms and say, no, you shouldn't. So why do you feel like you need to do it to MCs? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you want that money for your budget. You gotta make a boogeyman. That's what you gotta do. The truth be told, the Banditos, they do a lot of charity for their local communities. And I'm going to show you a councilwoman right now acknowledging that. A woman showed up to give the bikers a proclamation from the city for their charity work. This proclamation comes from the city of San Antonio. It is hereby, it is official congratulations to the Northwest Chapter Bandidos Motorcycle yeah. Club. Come up here. This San Antonio-based chapter has an impressive re record of supporting benevolent charity, charit charitable causes. Your dedication to the community has not gone unnoticed and is worthy of recognition and praise. The members of the City Council of the City of San Antonio extend their sincere congratulations. That was the San Antonio chapter receiving a deal from the council about their charity work. A lot of clubs throughout the world, not only the United States, do a lot for their communities. The Banditos are no different. It is kind of funny, we have her talking in a couple minutes about them, how they're misunderstood, and law enforcement, their union, right away threatened not to help her in a re-election because she acknowledged their work. How petty is that truly of law enforcement even though they were doing something great for the community but because they wear a patch that says banditos the law enforcement union comes out threatens this councilwoman and then she's forced to recant everything that she had to say even though during this uh interview this little mini one you can see that she wasn't scared of them, that she believes that they're a good organization, that they're trying to help the community, but law enforcement, as usual, has to stick its head right into it, and that right there is something that I believe is truly disgusting. While most people are afraid of the banditos, the councilwoman didn't think they lived up to their dangerous reputation. Well, I was one of those, and I think that this is a, this is a step in the right direction if we can t let the public know that they're not bad people they're good people and that even though they make a lot of noise but the proclamation did not go over well with the san antonio police union which at the time withdrew its support for the councilwoman's re-election bid forcing her to apologize law enforcement says the banditos are a criminal organization with hundreds of members who engage in everything from drug dealing prostitution gun running and sometimes even murder it's very funny how hypocritical law enforcement really is. They don't look at their own, their own that's causing problems throughout this country right now. They don't look and they don't want to admit that members of their own force are worse than a lot of outlaw bikers are. That's the thing, isn't it? Outlaw bikers, they're supposed to be criminals. What a lot of people won't tell you is they just don't want society to be around them. They want to be left alone. That's, where they, that's why they wear symbols that might disgust people nowadays. That's because they want to be left alone. But law enforcement needs a boogeyman. Law enforcement needs that boogeyman so they can get a bump in their budget. Look at Waco, Texas. They were granted that gang center. Yeah, like Waco, Texas needs anything else, man. They've had two incidences so far, David Caress in Waco, as well as the Waco Twin Peaks deal. They're not the best of people down in Waco in the law enforcement. And I have to say, they pretty much hate bikers down there. And they sure to hell really hate bikers 
that wear MC patches. That's evident by their profiling, them pulling over people that are in the banditos, like that example, the kid going to uh, school, and he had a loaded gun that was legal. But yeah, they pursued that all the way into court now, didn't they? That's how bad they have it for the banditos and the rest of the motorcycle clubs down in Texas. If I was a club uh, hold, uh, patch holder down there, yeah, whew, it's like living hell down there right now. And that is like the epicenter of what law enforcement is really doing nationwide. They can't even get an award for the community service that they're doing. How petty and how messed up really is that, that they got such a hard on for these people? I think they need to take a look in the mirror, look at themselves. I think if you look at the history here in the last 18 months of uh, in San Antonio, there's been more cops arrested for slinging dope than there has been banditos. And not to mention other things that they've been arrested for. They make the paper a hell of a lot more than we do. And the bikers make it clear. They take things into their own hands when things go down and what they see as bandito territory. I'm gonna give you an example. My home was broken into, I don't call the police department. I go handle it myself. It takes them 30 days to do what I can do in, in, in a day. I'll find out who did it. I don't need them. Uh, we, we handle, actually, we handle our own business uh, in the streets. I'll go any extent to be with my brothers when we're burying a brother. I don't care who you are. That was some cool stuff right there. Straight to the point, and it's about time that the media gets that kind of treatment. In your face, no holds bar. Now again, that was years ago. That was before he actually went to prison because a bunch of rats, but we'll cover, I think I actually did cover that stuff in a video, so go take a look at that. I'll try to find a video of where I covered it. it had to do with uh, downtown Romo, or Homo as I call it, a bunch of rats, the sergeant at arms, the whole nine yards. Uh, yeah, it was something else, but for Somebody in his position at the time to actually say, and how he said it was even better, you know, the past 15 months or 18 months, whatever he said, uh, there was more cops uh, busted for slinging dope than uh, any member of the Banditos were, and that is true nationwide. It really is, guys. Uh, I know I'm biased towards law enforcement and there's a lot of reasons why and a lot of it has to do with the way they act let's face it they're hypocrites and if you're a hypocrite why would i want anything to do with you and that's true of a lot of you guys that ride motorcycles with patches on that are law enforcement you got to pick a you know Pick your uh, poison here. You're either going to be a cop or you're going to be a biker and a member of a true motorcycle club. The problem is that the general population of bikers or enthusiasts now support you. You've seen your opium, opening. Now you got your boogeyman to even give the people within the scene pause. And again, that's evident by what you push. Now, the next one has to do with that is when the banditos were supposed to show up to a rally, all of a sudden, all this media and stuff like that ran out and asked people, well, are they scared? Are they scared of the big bad boogeyman? You guys are crazy, man. Just crazy. Royal and Todd, yesterday there were only a handful of bikes here on Main Street, but today, gosh, it goes on as far as the eye can see. And we spoke to some of these people today. They say despite what happened in Waco, Texas, they're excited for a fun and safe weekend. The small town of Red River is starting to fill up for the 33rd annual Memorial Day Motorcycle Rally. About 20,000 people are expected from across the country. Fred and Peggy Anderberg made the trip from Texas. Everybody's real friendly and 
you know, everybody will just stop and talk and stop and get gas and make new friends. With people who, too, have a passion for bikes, like the Banditos. The Department of Justice considers this motorcycle group a gang that takes part in organized crime. Isn't it funny that they made local news because they were just going to show up to a rally? This happens with a lot of major 1% clubs, especially when they have their nationals. The whole town is ablaze that the banditos are coming. To, they're like Paul Revere, man. The banditos are coming. The banditos are coming. That is just insanity. And as soon as they hit the local news, like at the beginning of the show, these news anchors, the first thing they do is go to the DOJ. This is what the DOJ and this is what law enforcement say about them because they're the boogeyman. When in reality, all they're doing is trying to get ratings. That's all they're trying to do. And here's what the attendees at that event had to say. No. 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 Others say they had no hesitations either. Banditos, Hell's Angels, I mean, they're all very nice. They've, no one's ever bothered us. Megan Christie decided to bring her whole family up from Albuquerque for the weekend. She says she's not worried about their safety at all. I'm not going to be hanging out in bars and, or, you know, picking any fights, so. I asked to speak with some of the banditos here today. They politely declined. And as we told you last night, about 50 officers will be patrolling the area at any given time. So far, they've reported no problems. In Red River, Megan Cruz, KOAT Action 7 News. I bet they weren't expecting to get that answer. No, people are not afraid of them. People are not afraid of the clubs that been around these type of events because they know they're treated better by motorcycle clubs and especially the bigger ones than they are from law enforcement. Actually, you go and ask a neighborhood where a motorcycle clubhouse is at and they will back that motorcycle club 100% because they know that clubhouse and those people that ride in that club will protect that community. They feel safer actually around the clubhouse than they do when it comes to law enforcement. Law enforcement, we all know in the big cities, they don't know how to patrol the neighborhoods or they're either they don't care. Let's just put it that way. You know, I want to kind of watch the tone right there. But they don't care about the community. And the people that live in that community know that. And when they have the clubs there, the clubs take care of the community. Just like they did in San Antonio. But, you know, that's when the police union had a trample on in. So this is kind of, you know, the response to that video that's going around from... There's a bunch of them, but I wanted to make sure that you guys heard from the club itself and how Portilio was, man. Portilio. My God, man. He was straightforward, wasn't he? Uh, it's too bad clubs don't take the time and really rebut a lot of stuff that they see in the news, but I understand why. So don't forget, we're going over right now. I got China Dow in the studio. We're about to go on air. Yes, don't miss out, man. I'm putting uh, the link in the chat box right now so you guys can go on over and have a good old time, baby. I'm out of here.